In this video, we're going to continue with techniques for solving linear equations. As we left off in the first video, we were learning to clear fractions in an equation by multiplying through by a least common denominator. For this equation, our denominators are 5, 2, and 10. The smallest number evenly divisible by all three is 10. But again, if you pick a number like 20, 20 is okay because 5, 2, and 10 will all divide into 20 evenly. I'm going to stick with 10 and multiply each term in this equation by 10. Even the non-fraction ones. In the first fraction, 5 goes into 10 twice, 2 times x. In the second fraction, or second term, 2 goes into 10 5 times x, 10 times 3. And then finally, in our last group, the 10s cancel. 10 goes into 10 once times 3x. And we've eliminated every fraction. And that's the idea. 2x minus 5x is negative 3x. They're on the same side, so you make a direct calculation. Now, to get the x's on one side, I'm going to take these three x's off. When you move across the equation, you go opposite. Negative 6x is the result of negative 3x minus 3x. On the right side, all we have left is 30. And then since we have the x and the constant term separated, division will let us clear off the x. 30 divided by negative 6. That's right, negative 5. There are special occasions when you have an equation with fractions where you can kind of bypass multiplying by a least common denominator. For example, in this equation, 16x plus 3 over 7x plus 6 is set equal to 1 half. If you run across a situation like this where you have one fraction equals to one fraction, then you can use a technique called cross multiplication. You multiply your terms diagonally and set them equal to one another. Now this only works when you have two fractions set equal. We have parentheses because the left fraction has two terms and we have to collect those in parentheses, but We've seen in previous examples how to clear parentheses. 2 times 16x plus 2 times 3. That's equal to 1 times 7x plus 1 times 6. Let's collect the x's on one side. We can subtract 7x from both sides of the equation. 
that gives us 25x plus 6 equals 6. Whatever side you collect your variables on, move your constant terms to the other. So I'm going to subtract 6. Make sure you do the same thing to both sides. 25x is equal to 0. And then finally, since we've separated the variable terms from the constant terms, division at the end, 0 divided by 25, very good, 0. In this example, we're going to look at 17 over x minus 5 equals 5 over x plus 3. There are a couple of different ways to approach this. We could multiply all the way through by x. We could also use adding and subtracting to move x terms to one side, constants to the other. Um, it's really up to you. The main thing is what you do on one side of an equation. You've got to do it to the other. I'm going to go ahead with our multiplying through by least common denominator. The only denominators we have are x and x. <clears throat> Excuse me. That makes it pretty easy to decide what to use as a multiplier. I'm just going to use x all the way through. Make it look a little better. There we go. In the first group of terms, the x's cancel, leaving us 17. In the second group, 5 times x. Third group, that's right, the x's cancel, leaving 5 plus 3x. It's not mandatory to isolate x on the left side of your equation. You don't have to. In fact, maybe you want to move these over. Just as long as you go opposite signs when you're moving across the equation. The left side of the equation, we're left with a 17. On the right side, 5 plus 8x. Okay, so one side of the equation contains the x term. Let's make sure the other side contains the constants. 12 equals 8x. Once you've got them separated, that's where you divide. And that'll clean off the x term. What's 12 over 8 in a reduced form? Both numbers are divisible by 4, so that's right, 3 halves. In our last example for this video, we have 1 over x plus 5, excuse me, 1 over x minus 5, plus 7 over x plus 7, And that's equal to 8 over x squared plus 2x minus 35. I'm going to level that out a little bit, make it look better. There we go. That third third denominator 
can be simplified through factoring. The x squared, the lead term of the denominator, you can split that into x times x. There's a pair of numbers that will add up to 2 and will also multiply to negative 35. And they're going to be positive 7 and negative 5. Negative 5 plus 7 is 2. That's your middle value. Negative 5 times 7 is negative 35. That's your last value. Looking at the problem overall, if we multiply every term by x minus 5 times x plus 7, that's going to eliminate all the fractions. So let's do that. x minus 5 times x plus 7. Okay, <clears throat> excuse me. All right, so first term was one over x minus five plus seven over x plus seven, and that was equal to eight over x minus five x plus 7. About to run out of room. Alright, so going back to the first group, the x minus 5's cancel leaving x plus 7 times 1 in the second group x plus 7's cancel and that leaves 7 times x minus 5 And in our third group, x minus 5 times x plus 7 all cancels, leaving an 8. Let's use distributive property to eliminate the parentheses. 7 times x minus 7 times 5. x plus 7x is 8x, 7 minus 35, how much is that? Negative 28. Add 28 to both sides. And now we finally have the variable term separated from the constant term. Divide by 8. Which reduces to, both numbers are divisible by 4, 9 halves. <clears throat> 